Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome one. Welcome all. Yay. Here we are again. So we're going to cover some things happening out there uh, from the geopolitical supply chain, also with some earth changes, weather related. And then we're going to get into a message from the uh, Galactic Federation as well. Yes, this means that I've already done my part <laughs> so i yes. don't have to contribute much it's all my and again uh, often when we get these messages it could be any time you know typically most of our messages come through i'd say between 3 and 6 a.m is when most of them come through so what it is is a scramble in the dark and start to re start recording the conversation that comes through uh from the galactics is Cindy is able to be a very clear uh, channel when she's trance channeling, and then also she can get messages without that as well, with, with being in a normal state of consciousness. Yeah, you know, you've got to relax and, and kind of step into it to a certain extent, but trance is, like, easiest because it just flows. Yeah, you know, her consciousness kind of steps out. Um, she is guarded by our guides. So, you know, there's nothing negative that could get in. It, it would be an impossibility for it to be able to get in and stay in for any length of time as, as the guides are guarding her and as well as my higher self. And, uh, you know, so we know who we're talking to when we're talking to these, these beings. So starting here, we see that Putin and Biden holding talks. These are basically uh, talks via like teleconferencing about the growing tensions between uh, the U.S. and Russia over the Ukraine. Primarily, there are things going on as we as we know. There's a major, major power shift going on globally right now. Very, very big. So these things are the things that we like to keep an eye on, and then kind of give you our understanding on it in a spiritual kind of way so that maybe you can connect your own dots. You know, and it's interesting because we did get a follow-up message after the message that we're sharing with you um, that was talking about conflict in and amongst the powers that be. You got to realize these beings that have been controlling this matrix, they're loaded with ego. And even though they might have a common agenda, they're always fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Always. I mean, it's just the nature. They're, they're like, um, well, you, you could think of it like a pack of hungry wolves. And, you know, they're going to be fighting amongst themselves for, for scraps, <laughs> as well as for the best pieces, uh, you know, of dinner, so to speak. Yes, that's what they do. It's just the way they are. That's why there is constant uh, warfare amongst themselves. We can look back through history, and again, how many times have you heard of these tales in the in the history annals uh, of interfighting amongst the elite? How many kings and queens, and you know their their literal family, blood family, end up getting rid of each other, you know, betrayal. We, I mean, it's just, history is just so loaded with it. You know, brothers fighting over kingship and over lands and, you know, cousins. It, it goes on and on. This is just who they are. They're just full of greed, selfishness, and uh, a lot of the darker vibrational emotions. Yeah, they just can't seem to help it. Yeah, so, you know, unfortunately... You know, the pawns in these games of warfare that never stop are, are average people. Often, you know, in the old days, it would just be the peasants, the farmers. That would be, you know, all of a sudden, nope, yeah, you're going to war. I don't want to. You're going to war, you know, and now we have drafts and everything in the modern age. But it's the same. It's the same as it always was. So they will be speaking on national interests and not emotions. And I wonder which clone is going to be speaking to Putin. I wonder, are there more than one of Putin? Or is there just one Putin? You know, I'm seeing viewing three, so. Okay, so mm -hmm. you feel like there's three of them. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, you can see the differences in the faces of them when you look close with these different leaders. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. And that was Thomas Jefferson. You know, it's, it's so interesting to see how things have been worked under the guise of, you know, democracy, freedom. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, and, and the greater good, yeah, as, as we've talked about. You know, the, the Reaganomics, uh, trickle-down economics. Don't worry. It's going to make it down to the bottom. You know, all the wealth. Well, there was yet another... Uh, article that was again going through the fact that since the plague upon the land has come billionaires have increased their net worth like tremendously literally uh they have gotten the lion's share of the wealth on this planet just since you know december of 2019 and all quote unquote hell broke loose on the planet and here we see this from american media group a complete list of 800 FEMA camps. You know, if you wanted to do some camping. You know, oh, oh, that is so nice that they set this up for us. Yes, isn't that? They're always thinking of us. But I, I didn't want to focus on that so much. I'll give you guys the links as always. I wanted to focus on these things. It's through the use of executive orders. Executive orders that so much of our, our liberties have been completely uh, taken away. And this has happened throughout so many different president, you know, presidencies, so many different regimes um, from both sides, the left and the right. And they do things that is, you know, it would leave most people with a really sick feeling in their stomach if they realized all the stuff that's been put into effect that can you know lead to basically a slave nation and you have your executive order 10990 allows the government to take over all modes of transportation control of highways and seaports uh, 10995 allows the government to seize and control communication to me media 10997 allows the government to take over all electrical, power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Uh, 10998 allows the government to seize all modes of transportation, including personal cars, trucks, or vehicles of any kind, and total control again over highways, seaports, and waterways. How about 10999? Somebody's going to flip that around and say 66601, you mean? Yeah. Allows the government to take over all food, resources, and farms. Yeah. Let's say that again. Allows the government to take over all food, resources, and farms. Oh, but I'm sure it's just for our benefit. Oh, I'm sure. Because they know better. And then we have 11... Zero, zero, zero. Allows the government to mobilize civilians into work brigades. Under the government supervision. Hmm. Work brigades. That's, you know, I, I, can't you see that, that you could maybe misconstrue that to be slavery? You know, the more we look at those Sumerian stories about humanity being viewed by the gods as slaves to do their bidding, well, the more it seems to all make sense. Yep. You know, why Why in the world would the creator of the multiverse make noise, since if God is ultimately spirit, make noise walking in the Garden of Eden? And why would he like the smell of burnt flesh? Got to ask yourself these questions. And obviously, it, the, the easy answer is it's not the creator of everything. And so, 11001 allows the government to take over all health, education, and welfare functions. And it just goes on and on down through these executive orders that will get you more and more nauseous. Another one designates Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all people's Another one allows the government to take over all airports, aircraft, including commercial aircraft. Another one allows the housing and financing 
authority to relocate communities, entire communities, relocate them, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. We have gotten from the galactics that, you know, there will be people that will be moving from where they are now. Um, and, you know, these may be caused by, in some cases, uh, earth changes, of which, you know, we know there's definitely a lot of artificial flavoring involved. And other things as well, potentially including the possibility of conflict. So this goes on and on. So basically, I, I mean, I, I think when you get to the point where you're looking at people being formed into work brigades and the fact that all the food could be taken, I mean, just look what happened in the Revolutionary War and Civil War on this in this country, you know, where you would have, in the case of Revolutionary War, you know, you'd have uh, the Redcoats and the British, you know, coming in and, and commandeering all, you know, family supplies. Same thing happened, you know, the Union troops just swooping in and, you know, taking uh, supplies as needed from, say, Southern farmers, you know, so to speak, and leaving them, you know, no cows or whatever it is, you know, it's like, well, you know, hey, the, the government comes first, the army comes first, whatever mm -hmm. it is. They come first. Now, is that the way it should be? Let's refer back to here. When the people fear the government, there's tyranny. When the government fears the people, there's liberty. Hmm. Well, it sounds like those laws, you know, have basically taken away any sort of, you know, liberty. It's just a matter of do we realize that yet? How many people realize that? And here you see a quote from Hermann Goering uh, during the Nuremberg trials and you know, he was perhaps uh, number three in line uh, as far as the power structure of the NAZI apostrophe S's. Naturally, the common people don't want war, neither in Russia, nor in England, nor in America, nor for that matter in Germany. That is understood. But the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. That is easy. All you got to do is tell them they're being attacked and denounce the pacifists for lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger. It works the same way in every country. So these are all interesting things to keep in mind as we go through and, and see what's happening on the you know, global front here. India and Russia broaden defense ties despite potential risk of U.S. sanctions. India and Russia on Monday signed two, more than two dozen deals across a variety of sectors and inked a 10-year defense cooperation pact. Yeah, it's, it's going to last through that infamous 20, you know, 30 date that we see out there, which, by the way, still looks like the timeline for you know, when things really shift big time. 28 agreements concluded Russian President Vladimir Putin's visit to New Delhi and meeting with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi during the 21st India-Russia Annual Summit. India's Foreign Secretary said Russia has started delivering its long-range S-400 surface-to-air missile defense systems to India, based on a deal the two countries signed in 2018. As you see, they look pretty chummy. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that that's kind of like the smile I have on my face when I do go to an Indian buffet. Yes. I, that's one of my favorite things in this world. It's adorable. I love Indian food. Indeed. It's my favorite food. We both do a lot. We do. But he probably loves it more than I do because he just does. But I made some amazing curry the other day. He did. It's yeah. awesome. Always Absolutely awesome. incredible. Now, this, before we go on, um, let me just bring this up. And, um, you know, we are going to basically go over that message last see and in, in the hopi prophecy it does talk about interesting enough that the united states would be attacked you know and uh, um, now this one there's one particular one i like to use the most here but basically, it talks about, you know, the United States would be attacked by those 
ancient countries that first brought the light into the world. Warfare with those who possess the first light of wisdom. And um, Whitefeather furthermore said, the conclusion of the fourth world will be accompanied by great wars and mass destruction. He believed this would especially occur in the lands where the first light of wisdom appeared, perhaps the Middle East or Near East. And, you know, of course, we always had that nonstop war going on. But when we look at that, who, who first had the light of wisdom? Well, yeah, you got to look to really India and, and China. Now, India and China have been at it on the border, and there's skirmishes that happened uh, you know, in the previous couple of years. But this is fascinating because Russia is aligned with China, and Russia is aligned with India. If you took 1.4 billion uh, people in China, added 1.3 billion people in India, uh, and then you add some of these other nations to the mix, you have like half the world's population. Mm -hmm. Half the world's population. This would this shifts the balance of power greatly, especially when the window for Chinese dominance is going to be a short one, because most experts will tell you that, you know, if the world continues on as it is that eventually the, the power that's going to dominate the planet is India. And so this is very fascinating to see this alliance uh, developing. And meanwhile, as we've been talking about, is the decline of the U.S. so rapidly. Hmm. Most Americans no longer have great trust in their military. As a new survey came out um, showing how quickly it's deteriorated, especially in <laughs> the last year. Imagine that. Yes, it is. This year has been just uh, an amazing decline in in the confidence in the country itself, and especially in the leadership. Public confidence has tumbled twenty five percentage points from seventy percent in the past three years. The rating has plunged eleven points in the last nine months, under number forty six, and figures for other institutions are even lower. Only 19% of Americans have strong trust in the presidency as of November, down 30% in February. It's, this is huge. Same thing with law enforcement as well, and then the military as well. Just 42% of Americans have a great deal of confidence in the military's ability to win an overseas war. And similarly, only 40% trust the military will act in a professional and non-political manner. Asked which country has the best military, 69% still said the U.S., 17% picked China. 32% said the U.S. uses the military in too many situations where diplomacy would be better. So, you know, if we, if we go back to the words of William Cooper, no longer with us after, you know, shortly after 9-11-01, uh, he, he warned all about this back in the 80s. And he said that, you know, the U.S. is just simply going to be the policeman slash military force for the powers that be, not the American people, the powers that be. And the Great Awakening is, is simply understanding all these things. And as we get to the point where people will just simply say, no, you know, I don't want to support nonstop warfare. Do you? Oh, God, no, of course, nobody does. And anyone who's listening to this or just in a home, in a, in a, a town, any town, they, you guys, we don't want this. And it's like there's no way we could ever voice this to the elites because they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen because that's not going to help their agenda. Exactly. So, you know, you have Australia. Australia, you know, we we've have so many family members in Australia that hit us as being amazingly balanced individuals, you know, with a good spiritual understanding. And we were just talking uh, yesterday, I think we were talking about, we're wondering if it's the Lemurian influence that's still over in that part of the globe, uh, that higher vibe, understanding it. And yet they're so locked down. They're so locked down under the worst uh, oh. of, of pretty much what we're seeing around the globe. And, and here you got there's a major, major disaster brewing there supply chain wise. There's a diesel exhaust fluids shortage that's going to cause chaos. 
perhaps in months, and definitely by the time we get to you know six months down the road, this is an additive that they they put into uh, the oil, and it's it's a requirement because it reduces certain emissions. So it's a requirement by law, but because China controls like 90% of this and is no longer shipping it out, it's going to mean that there's going to be a ton of trucks off the road that will not be able to uh, function. And what's it going to do? Okay, so 80% supply comes from China and they're no longer sending it out. So, you know, this is going to dwindle to critical levels. If it comes to pass, thousands of private cars, commercial trucks will be forced off, forced off the road. And what's going to be affected? We could see trucks pulled off the road, which would affect deliveries like fresh fruit, vegetables, and meat to supermarkets. There we go. The craziness of the world, because for one, you know, they hide from us technology where we really don't need any of what we would call fossil fuels and that of course is a big debate right there uh, if we want to you know open that up as we were talking about how is there more you know um, petroleum products to be had over in a moon of you know Saturn than there is here if they are fossil fuels mm -hmm. so are you telling us there's life over there um, and then, you know, somebody had mentioned, well, it could be, you know, plants and things like that, too. Well, still, we're talking life. You know, they don't want to admit that there's life anywhere. They really, they cover it up. And here you see, uh, you know, the leader of Australia having a great old time. I don't see anything on his face, you know, playing around on race cars and all while this crisis is brewing but this is what we've seen this is this is you know again another example of you know do what we say but not as we do right and we've seen that most definitely i, I keep thinking of the governor of california that you know got reaffirmed by landslide uh-huh <sighs> yeah it's it's craziness and you know craziness also weather wise we have storm Bara, extremely dangerous double bomb cyclone explodes over ireland and the uk they love using these letters big big letters you know bombogenesis uh, yeah it's an intense storm you know 80 mile an hour winds very cold um it, we've seen some major major wave action uh in recent times in many different parts of the globe too from these storms so it's gonna be a cold one better get that fire going mm -hmm. please get that fire going i i heard lots of you should have your firewood out and ready by now hope but you know i mean there's gonna be something with that regulated but you you can only burn one quarter log a day because of your carbon emissions quarter log for you you know that's coming mm -hmm. in this absolutely crazy system that absolutely makes no logical sense unless you look at it from a certain perspective hawaii got blasted uh state of emergency potentially catastrophic flooding um you know, you have up on the mountaintop snow uh you have again uh wind that is getting close to 100 miles an hour insane amounts of rain has already fallen and more is coming so hang on tight two feet of rain is possible in some areas yes it's scary it is especially when you're you know in that type of situation because you know so much of the housing is like on steep steep slopes well yeah one of our family members uh was texting me and telling me that um you know the roofs were being torn off of the chicken coops and husband had to go get gas for the generator but he had a really hard time finding a gas station where there was um power so they could get the gas so very concerning yeah and when you think about that you know you might have all this gas ready to be processed but you know what you know if you're in australia you might not be able to get any because there's an additive that's required by law and you know here you have you're going to have an emergency situation potentially people starving but you know the law states the additive has to be in there uh so we, we can't sell you it right so they know how to run the red tape just right Oh, inside and out, inside and out. You know, it's just I wonder how much of the legislatures, legislators 
that you know pass these things really understand what they're passing. I, I think they're just thinking about getting to the next um, barbecue buffet or maybe racetrack in some cases, right. or maybe the golf course. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, you know their constituents are starving. Yeah, I know it's horrible. Heavy snowfall hits the north of Spain with more than 24 inches in six hours. So these these wild extremes are are getting even more extreme. Maybe there's a lot of musical action going on with uh, some harp action there. Uh-huh. Modern times in Estonia. A, ro- a robot which has become stuck in the snow saw me coming. I asked with it asked with a synthesized voice whether I could help it out. Wow! <laughs> so they did. Oh, wow! They did, and and the robot carried on. Thank oh, you. Gosh, my my my. Oh, yeah, it's, well, crazier things are coming. It's all about crazy. They're going to be leaking uh, radioactive water from Pilgrim Nuclear Power Plant into Cape Cod Bay. Oh, my gosh. What can you say about that? I don't know. Well, just in case, we are on Rumble, you know. if we get Sometimes they don't like it when we talk about this stuff. No, this is, again, disrespecting the very planet that we live on and, and, and potentially... And more than likely, you know, impacting so many different beings that are on this planet in this area in a negative way that may lead to premature demise. Yeah, you know, how yeah. stupid could a system be? Can we say, you know, again, either the leadership at the top is a bunch of just blooming idiots, so to speak, or there's something much worse than that going on. Well, I don't know. You know, we we do know how to use our energy now. So I would ask you guys who are earth healers to send the energy to these beings that are doing this. And maybe someone will get a, a thought stuck in their head and stop this process. Yeah. So there's a new type of earthquake which comes about um, because of the injection that they use for fracking. And so it's an entirely new type of uh, seismic event that's been categorized due to the fact you know, the fracking process and injecting these chemical compounds into the earth, you know, which in many cases are extremely toxic. That's going down into areas where it could affect water supply, Mm -hmm. you know, and if you look, say, for instance, over to, you know, Hopi land and Navajo land, and, you know, if we we talk about the area around uh, Gallup, New Mexico, which we know very well, and uh, they're above it. So much instances of C-A-N-C-E-R. And, you know, we wonder why with everything that's going on. And so you have, you know, the the governor there who, honestly, we couldn't stand. Um, Just so proud of all the money being brought to New Mexico because of this. Mm -hmm. But at what cost? The, the actual citizens, you know, and, and for how long to come. Everything that we see going on is all about stopping human growth, spiritual growth. Everything is about stopping it. It's all about stopping the awakening of the Kundalini. It's all about stopping the flowering of the pineal gland and the expansion of consciousness. This is it. This is the biggest That's thing. The bottom line. Yeah. And so we are going to share um, the message from Laurel from the Galactic Fed and the Pleiadian High Council. What was possible in the past, only to the greatest masters out there that devoted their entire lives to nothing but meditation, yoga, qigong, things like that. Their entire lives will be available to the average person. That's the beauty of this time. The, the It's still happening. The ascension process is still happening. And this is beautiful. The miracles that we see attributed to Yeshua and to many, many other saints and yogis and Buddhist monks as well will be things that will be commonplace with the masses, we're going to be able to do things that are just inconceivable. Miracles will be 
just commonplace. Yep. Miracles will be, yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be wonderful. And this is the secret that they wish to hide. They have to keep this a secret because when we discover what we can do as a collective, then we run the show. So this, this article, again, I'll have the links, How the Great Masters Attain the Miraculous Yogic Powers, uh, Clairvoyance, and, and other things, Telepathy, it may be even Telekinesis in some cases, Bilocation, uh, all these things have been documented many, many, many times. And there's also been so many documentations of what's known as the Tibetan Rainbow Body. Uh, where people literally are here today, go on tomorrow, and ascend. As you see a photo here, he's very much solid. There he's going bye-bye. He's ascending up and out of this dimension of reality. Mm -hmm. Tens of thousands of cases of this have happened. And what's the primary tool that they use in, in, in achieving the rainbow body? It's, it's mantras and meditation. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a beautiful thing, and it can change your life. It can change everything about you. It can heal you. There's so much that it can do. And, um, you know, it's just too bad we weren't taught this from a very small age. But you know what? When you know better, you do better, and now we're being taught. Yes, and, you know, through mantras and meditation, you can uncover your past lives. As, as now, as, as I understand, it almost seems like a seems like almost every other incarnation uh, from myself. It, it, I go back to being a monk along these lines and these traditions. And, you know, that's, that's something that I've used throughout these different incarnations to root and ground my soul. After we go through a life, it can be extremely tra traumatic, especially with the matrix that we have in place, which wants to, you know, create so much disaster, warfare, destruction, negative vibes. It really does traumatize the soul. And we could do so much good if we utilize mantras and meditation, qigong, yoga, on a daily basis. We could completely uh, repattern ourselves into such a positive mode. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's really, the skies are the limit in these times. So now you're going to be listening to uh, Laurel from, again, the G-Fed, and the Pleiadian High Council. We are doing well. We are watching the evolutionary process of your planet. And we are happy to report that the light, even though it is being stifled, the light is growing, and we wish to continue to encourage people in their efforts to stay pure and continue to evolve. These treatments that are being given are the last ditch efforts to stop your evolutionary process. We might also add that the abilities of people are coming online in such a way that people are noticing changes in their bodies and in their minds and they're not sure exactly what these changes are about. We wish to let people know that this is the evolutionary process and that if it is left alone it can evolve beautifully on its own, much like blooming of a flower. They are trying to stop this because people's DNA is starting to wake up. Me. 
TNA energies and memories are starting to unfold. Individuals are remembering who they are at a very fast rate, even faster than they can stop them. We are very encouraged by what we are seeing. The news media that you are being exposed to is a false advertisement of sorts where they are trying to get people discouraged and feeling helpless and hopeless. But no matter where you are, who you are, if you are able to reach this broadcast, your energies are evolving. Even if you might have been forced to have a treatment, if you are listening to this broadcast, we wish for you to continue to detox your physical bodies and your energy bodies because you are still evolving. There is so much hope. We are very pleased with what we see on your planet at this time. Do you have anything encouraging that you want to give people in, say, some of the areas that have had a tougher go of it, like Australia, for instance, or maybe Austria as well? For those that feel they are being forced to submit, we ask that you please hang on to these evolutionary energies and stay strong. Do the best that you can every day. Reach out emotionally, energetically, and touch people in a way that you might encourage their light to come on. Please remember that these energies that are portraying themselves as the absolute truth are the energies trying to keep you in a stagnant place so that you might not evolve. Do not believe this. Do not be in fear. Your evolution has started. It is extremely difficult or possible to stop. You cannot stop Mother Nature as it is time for you to evolve and spread your light. There is no stopping at this point. There is only moving forward. That is beautiful. How do you see things going with the supply chain? And we want to thank you for everything that you've done and keeping us going and giving us more time to be ready. We are keeping the supply chain as stable as possible. There are infiltrations that are trying to break up this supply chain, but with your continued efforts and energy being put toward the good of all, it is able to sustain wherever you are. This is the power of your light. We do hope that you're understanding how your power works by now. Your intentions are extremely important. Intentions to have energies evolve in a positive way. There will be difficult times ahead. But with your help, it does not have to be a 
ugly process, it can be an awakening that is beautiful. The financial system, there's so much talk of it collapsing and a new one being implemented, perhaps even in a matter of weeks, sometime perhaps before the end of the year. Do you foresee this on the timeline generator, or is that something that looks like it's farther out? At this time, we see that the financial collapse is further out, but we do encourage people to find different ways of sustaining themselves and their home, finding ways to minimize the need to make purchases outside of your home, getting items that are reusable, reusing as much as possible, recycling as much as possible through your home so that it, you do not rely on these financial systems. At that point, when there is a One moment. If you can get used to buying things that are reusable, having your entire home set up so that you need very little outside your home when they are arranging the financial system it will not have a huge impact on you you will already have created your bridge this will make the timeline this will make the timeline much easier to change. We're sorry this channel is having difficulty at this time. We will step away now. Thank you for sharing, Laurel. Namaste. Namaste. So again, that was Laurel from the GFET, as we say, and Pleading High Council sharing what, what they are seeing uh, from above as far as densities go. You know, we've talked about their ability to turn off certain technologies, and I think some people get the idea that they could just, you know, just turn on a button and everything is fine. But it, it really doesn't work that way. And these benevolent beings, too, they follow certain codes and ethics. It's very much like what we see in Star Trek with that non-interference, you know. They don't want to take away any of our ability to make our own decisions. Yet, at the same time, obviously, the dark side has basically gotten us to give away our own free will in, in so many ways. Right. They, I mean, they have no problems, you know, playing the karma machine and they have no problems using things to their benefit. And when you say that, you mean the dark side? Yes, absolutely. I do mean the dark side. Sorry. Clarify that. That's my husband's awesome. Hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like they, they have no problems using this, utilizing these things for their own benefit and we just simply want to live our lives. We want to, you know, do what we want to do, grow, learn, experience. And we want to do that with our own free will. So the benevolent ones, they wish for us to use our free will and be able to express ourselves in any way, shape or form that we choose to while we're here. They don't want to interfere with that. Exactly. You know, and, and what we, what we, you know, how we grow and what we gain from our spiritual growth, we could take with us. If we're just gifted something without doing any work for it, we don't gain any sort of benefit 
in the next lifetime. You know, that doesn't come with us. We have to earn it, mm -hmm. you know. And so many of us are volunteering to be here in this time and don't have to be here from a karmic standpoint. They're, we're just basically guiding, teaching, and trying to help elevate people, help people understand what's really going on. But doing it in such a way that the soul is, is still able to go along its own chosen path. So, you know, if they did, you know, just come in and overthrow, you know, so to speak, the system that's here, uh, that would be, you know, changing a lot of souls' purposeful evolution and a lot of plans that different souls have made to meet certain challenges and, and test themselves and, and hopefully rise above certain circumstances. When we look to beings like the devas and we see them on these high vi vibrational planes and they're so much closer to source and able to feel source directly uh, more than us down in the 3D realm, well, they've gotten there through a lot of growth and countless incarnations. Perhaps, you know, numbers of incarnations that would just stagger the mind. It's taken a long time in many circumstances, many circumstances for them to get where they are. And some, you know, souls choose to reintegrate totally with source and that oneness. And others choose to stay uh, just a little bit below so they can help everybody else out in a way that doesn't change the decision making ability of the individual soul. Right. Exactly. Very, very important that we use our own free will for our personal soul growth. You know, it's you, we come down here and we're subjected to certain tests because we want to grow. We want to grow in such a way that's beneficial. And it, you can't really call it a test if you're just given all the answers, you know, that kind of deflates you. Exactly. You know, can you imagine that? Can you imagine like getting into a, a very prestigious uh, school that's so well known for, for turning out, say, amazing musicians or whatever it is and you got cheat codes so to speak you know you're able to like access every single test so you're you're not earning it you're not really absorbing it you're not really learning the lessons in order to progress higher up the ladder to develop that compassion that would enable you to become a being like the devas on on the higher levels you know compassion in many cases, comes through suffering and comes through understanding suffering that we see right up in our faces often. And, you know, it's through that that the soul evolves and goes to a new, a new plane, a new level. Absolutely. And that's a beautiful thing. So that's what we want to do. We want to earn this ourselves. We don't want to find out later that, well, you were just, you know, you were given the answers. <laughs> you don't want to find that out. That's such a bubble burster. People love to be proud of themselves. At least I do. You know, I love it when I do something good and I do it right. And I can say, that's mine. I own that. Nobody gave it to me. You know, that's something nobody can take away now. And that's where we need to be. We need to be in a space where they can't take anything away from us. What we have is ours and it's ours to keep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just to give one more analogy, you know, they have those like Guitar Hero games, so to speak, right? <clears throat> So, you know, what good is it if you find all the cheat codes to Guitar Hero and it makes you sound like the next uh, Eddie Van Halen or Stevie Ray Vaughan, and then you go to pick up an actual guitar and you can't play a damn thing. Right. <laughs> Where's the growth? Where's the growth? We could look at it, you know, in that light as well, because everything is about growth and exploration. Everything. That's, this is part of the soul's journey as the soul breaks off and becomes a separate individual from source, yet still is source within us. Source is still within us. And then eventually we go back to source. But there's this huge evolutionary path along the way. And it's all about learning and growing and experiencing from a unique point of view. And that's a beautiful thing. So thank you guys for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. We couldn't do it without your support. Please do support Medicinal Foods as well. If you feel so inclined, there's a link at the top of the video. As always, God bless and namaste. Namaste.